This is Travel Tuesdays. Every Tuesday, we present you with another incredible country. Today, we're looking at 15 things you didn't know about the Netherlands. Welcome to ALUX.com, the place where future billionaires come to get informed. Hello, Aluxers. How's life treating you lately? We're happy to have you back for yet another video about a very special country. Why special? Well, there's a lot to love about the Netherlands, from their freedom of speech, universal health care, education, and general well-being for its citizens. For example, the Netherlands is also the first country in the world to legalize same-sex marriage, so it's a very liberal and open-to-change country. The country's name means lower countries, since the land is mostly flat and is made out of 12 provinces, including Noord and Zod Holland, which together form Holland. Yes, we're going to leave this one here. The Netherlands does not equal Holland, even though most people use Holland to refer to the whole country. If you're new here, welcome! Be sure to subscribe and follow us on Instagram at Alux. So, sit back, relax, and join us for the 15 things you didn't know about the Netherlands. Number 1. Victor & Rolf is a fashion house created by Dutch co-founders. When we think about the fashion industry, we mostly think about Italy, France, or even the UK. It turns out the Netherlands has its own share of talented people in this field, who are also world-renowned. Victor Horsing and Rolf Soren started their own fashion house, Victor and Rolf, in 1993. Their collections are mostly avant-garde designs that borrow heavily from the art world, blending different concepts to create stunning theatrical fashion runways. Victor and Rolf will celebrate 25 years of activity this May with a collection of wearable art designs, going back to Rotterdam as Kings of the Netherlands Fashion World. Celebrities such as Black Panther's Denai Gurira and Zendaya have worn their dresses at film premieres and award shows. Number 2. In South Africa, people speak the 17th century Dutch language. Dutch is the official language of the Netherlands. It's a Germanic language that's also known as Flemish in northern Belgium. South Africa was colonized by the Dutch in the 17th century, and the settlers' language evolved to modern-day Afrikaans, a variant of Dutch. Nowadays, it's a distinct language, having its own characteristics, but back then, it was called Cape Dutch or Kitchen Dutch, a not-so-nice way to refer to the dialect spoken by slaves or servants of the colonial settlers. The language is also used in other African countries, such as Namibia and Botswana. Number 3. Gouda cheese comes from the Netherlands. Its creamy and rich texture makes it one of the most loved cheeses in the world. In fact, it's responsible for around half of the global cheese consumption. We're talking, of course, about Gouda cheese, which happens to be a Dutch specialty. Records show that this food is one of the oldest cheese delicacies we have left, originating in the 12th century in a city called Gouda in the Netherlands. Nowadays, Gouda is the generic name we use for the type of cheese, but it doesn't mean that the product is made from a more original recipe. So, if you happen to be in the country, you can also visit the markets in Gouda, which are, of course, the oldest cheese markets in the Netherlands, and have a taste of the real deal. Number 4. Their national football team has a weird nickname, Clockwork Orange. The football team is named Clockwork Orange, and no, it's not named after the book or the film, if you're wondering. The players are very proud of their bright orange t-shirts, orange being also the national color of the Netherlands. The color also has a royal history, since it has its origins in the titles given to the head of state, Prince of Orange. The football team has qualified five times in the World Cup semifinals, and apparently also prides themselves on their speed, since other nicknames include the Flying Dutchman. Number 5. The richest man in the Netherlands is Fritz Goldschmetting, with a net worth of $5.2 billion. The Netherlands has its share of billionaires, and at the top of the list is Fritz Goldschmetting, the octogenarian who holds the largest share of Randstad Holdings. Randstad Holding is a human resources consulting company, currently present in 39 countries. The company, which has also the second largest staffing agency in the world, took a hit last year because of Brexit. The magnate had a net worth of $5.2 billion and apparently lost 25.5% last year because of Brexit. He currently resides in Amsterdam, and while in his 80s, he's no longer a part of the management team of the company. Number 6. Thousands of contaminated eggs from the Netherlands infected Europe. The Netherlands became the center of a food controversy last year after failing to alert other European countries of contaminated eggs. 
The country is actually a large global exporter of eggs, having sent around 700,000 contaminated products in the UK only. The culprit seems to have been an insecticide called fipronil that is used to treat chickens and is illegal since it can affect the quality of the eggs. Around 180 Dutch farms bought the birds from a supplier that treated them with fipronil. The neighboring country, Belgium, was especially upset and authorities accused the Netherlands of withholding important information that could have prevented the situation from happening. Number 7. The government wanted to pass a law that would allow them to have access to private information on their citizens. The recent world data scandal has affected the country as well. A fear of terrorism and other online threats saw the proposal of a law that would essentially grant authorities the right to spy on its citizens. However, such a law cannot pass in the Netherlands without a referendum. The result? This year, around 6 million Dutch voters said no to government access to their emails and other online data. Critics of the law decried the invasion of privacy that such a measure would entail. Amnesty International also condemned it as being a human rights breach. Number 8. Black Pete is associated with racism and slavery by some. The Netherlands' colonial past has echoes in the present. Take, for example, Black Pete or Svart Pete, a character that acts as a sidekick to St. Nicholas. St. Nicholas is a beloved character that is similar to Santa Claus. Black Pete first appeared in 1850 in a book written by a Dutch schoolteacher and appears as a vestige of slavery to many today. It's not hard to see what they mean since those who portray him usually use blackface, dress in colorful clothes, put an afro wig on, and red lipstick. Scholars attribute this to the Dutch legacy of slavery that is seldom taught in Dutch schools, as if this part of history didn't really exist or its effects appear to be minimized, which, of course, is not accurate. Number 9. Coffee shops in Amsterdam are also places where you can buy weed. Many of the 5 million people that visit the Netherlands capital of Amsterdam each year also go there for the famous coffee shops. Amsterdam has the best coffee shops in the country, and that is saying something since cities such as Rotterdam and The Hague also have a lot of them. However, only 175 establishments are left in Amsterdam, and the number was double that in the 90s. Of course, people also visit coffee shops since it's perfectly legal to buy and consume marijuana while enjoying a cup of coffee or a meal. So if visiting the world capital of weed is on your bucket list, make sure to purchase a ticket to Amsterdam the next time you plan a vacation. Number 10. Vincent van Gogh's Portrait de Dr. Gachet was sold for $82.5 million. Painter Vincent van Gogh is one of the most beloved artists of all time, belonging to the Dutch post-impressionist movement. Although he died young and impoverished in 1890, he left us with astounding paintings such as Portrait de Dr. Gachet, a work that depicts the artist's doctor, who is described as carrying the desolate expression of our time. Exactly 100 years later, in 1990, the original version was sold for $82.5 million, setting a new record as the highest price that has ever been paid for a painting. It also set a record time, since the auction only lasted three minutes. There's also a second version of the painting, which can be seen at Musée d'Orsay in Paris, France. Want to find out some more about the impressive Vincent van Gogh? Check out our video, 15 Things You Didn't Know About Vincent van Gogh, by clicking in the top right corner. Number 11. People have a high living standard in the Netherlands. The Netherlands is a great place to live and even a greater place to work. It actually boasts the sixth highest hourly wage in the European Union. To give you an idea, if you work in the business sector, you would make an average of 38.8 euros per hour or around 45 US dollars. However, in Denmark, you would earn $50 hourly. 4% of Dutch employers earn the minimum wage and they are mostly young people who are employed in hotels and restaurants or work in agriculture and fisheries. That is still pretty good since the average salary for these workers is around 1,565 US dollars. Number 12. A sandstorm over the Netherlands made the sunsets bolder. Who said that the Netherlands was all about rain and gloomy skies? A very cool phenomenon took place in April of 2018, when a sandstorm from the Sahara blew across Europe. Dutch people were greeted on the 9th with the most colorful sunrises and sunsets they've probably ever seen. The phenomenon can be explained like this. 
The particles of sand refract light, which in turn makes the colors red, orange, and yellow appear bolder, and thus giving amazing sights. However, people still had to clean their lawn furniture or wash their cars since the dust got everywhere, and also mixed with the rain. Number 13. Prostitution is legal, but not on the streets. Here's another thing that the Netherlands is famous for. It's relaxed views on prostitution. One of the most popular tourist attractions in Amsterdam is the Red Light District, or De Wallen, which is situated in the city center. It's a place where sex workers stand behind windows, as if on display for everyone to see. In fact, there are 300 windows lit by neon lights. They have their own room and what they do is perfectly legal since they don't actually stand in the street. Since the year 2000, pimping has been abolished by law, and brothels must have a license. Plus, like any regulated industry, it also has to pay taxes. Number 14. Dutch people are the tallest in the world. If you visit the Netherlands, you'll likely feel like you're visiting the land of giants. You're not the only one, especially if you're shorter. It's pretty much common wisdom by now. On average, people from the Netherlands are the tallest in the world. Don't believe us? Take a look at the study conducted by the Imperial College of London on 18.6 million people. Studies show that the average Dutch man is 5 feet 10 inches tall, and the average Dutch woman is 5 feet 7 inches tall. That is ahead of other countries such as Denmark, Norway, and Germany. Actually, the average height of a man in the Netherlands is 8 inches more than what it used to be 150 years ago. Number 15. Tulips did not originate from the Netherlands, but from Turkey. The Netherlands is a tulip paradise, and it's well worth a trip if only to see them blooming during the tulip season in spring. It's no wonder that everyone believes the flowers originated here. However, a true tulip lover knows that they came from Central Asia and Turkey. Turkey cultivated a wide variety of tulips way before it became popular in Europe, and they also used them for decorative purposes. The flowers have an interesting history, since they were first brought to Europe in the 15th century, first to Vienna, then to the Netherlands. Nowadays, though, the country exports tulips all around the world and boasts many vast tulip fields. We hope you enjoyed today's video, Aluxers, and as always, we have a special question for you. What do you think of this country's relaxed laws on prostitution and marijuana consumption? Is it a good or a bad thing? Let us know down in the comments. And as always, for sticking with us all the way to the end, here's your bonus fact. Number 16. There are a lot of mini houses in Amsterdam. Amsterdam is full of stunning architecture, and there's no better example than the narrow canal houses that are also on the UNESCO World Heritage List. They now function as offices, hotels, or museums, but back in the Dutch Golden Age, they were houses for the rich. They were made to be so narrow since a building tax was calculated according to the width of a house's exterior side. Tourists can also visit the narrowest house in Amsterdam. It's only about 6 feet and 7 inches wide and has a small room on each floor. Talk about cramped living space! Thank you for spending some time with us, Aluxers! Make sure to like and subscribe so you never miss another video. We also handpicked these videos, which we recommend you watch next. Thank you for being an Aluxer, and we'll see you back tomorrow.